of 2019, I started going through these Bible studies, and they're pretty much the Bible studies that I've included in my foundational Bible studies playlist on my page, and I'll share a link in the comments below in case you're interested. But I was going through those studies and realizing that the Bible was a lot more in depth and a lot more incredible than I had ever given it credit for. And because of that, it launched me into this desire to study the word more deeply. And so just to give you an idea of my journey, and it doesn't have to be the same as anybody else's, and there is not one way that is better than another. This is just all how I was feeling and what I was desiring. So I had this desire to dig deeper into scripture, and I was kind of playing around with ideas. And one thing that I knew is that I didn't want to highlight a whole verse with one color because I knew that a lot of times verses can have to do with more than one topic and so I didn't want to be trapped in trying to figure out how to highlight with more than one color and I've done different things like highlight the whole verse and then circle it with a different color and those are the different meanings and so that's what brought me to starting to color code each word for a meaning but the whole reason that I started sharing the story is because I was definitely trying to figure out what color I wanted to have mean which topic and for me what was an exciting thing happened and it was reading this verse and it's numbers 15 verse 38 through 41 and it talks about the Lord speaking to Moses and telling him to tell the children of Israel that they should put a fringe on the borders of their garments, a ribbon of blue, and that the fringe would be on their garments so that when they looked at the fringe, they would be reminded of the commandments of the Lord. So that is what started my journey of, of thinking that I would actually like to have all the themes have a certain color and all of those themes have a certain Bible verse that represented why each color was chosen. It's a little bit tricky because all of these colors are not mentioned in scripture. So I had to kind of play loose with it other than this blue one. But what I thought I'd do today is show you what colors I came up with and how I'm marking my Bible. So in the back of my Bible is a color code chart, and I showed this in my last video, and this is actually the back side of it. And there's this Bible verse, Genesis 9, 13. I don't know what the translation is. I just found this online. It says, I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And so what I have beside it is each of the Bible verses that I found for each color. And I'll say this right at the start with all of my principles. Anytime you see an insert that I've created on my channel, just send me an email and I can send it out to you. So that's the back side, just keeping track of the Bible verses. I always wanted to have that with me. So I just put that on the back. But what happens is you flip this color code out and then it has each of the colors. So what I'm going to do is to turn in my Bible to each of these colors and show you them. So I went ahead and opened my Bible to the first one. And that is for the color red. And I think I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. So this is Deuteronomy 4.24. And it says, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So we also have that verse in Hebrews 12.29. For our God is a consuming fire. So here I have the word God and it's boxed in in red. And it might be hard to see the red on the screen. The other verse I do for this is 1 John 4.8. And it says, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So again, I have God in red. So the one thing about this is I have certain things on my color code that have more than one color. So I'm gonna show you these. God, Holy Spirit, Christ, Son of Man, which is when it's referring to Christ. There are some believers in the Bible that refer to as the Son of Man, but anytime it's referring to Christ, I box that in red. The names of and the attributes of God Holy Spirit, Christ, anything godly is in red. And whenever I see God's heart or God's love, I put a heart on that in red. And then the word worthy, that makes me think of his aura, so I tend to do a little squiggle mark around it. There are some other words listed here, but I'll go through them as I bring you to other verses. So the one thing I wanna mention, and it's similar with all the colors, the noun is circled and then the verb. So if it says, God speaks, I would have God circled, and then the speaks, the verb that he's doing, his action is underlined. For an example of that, I have in Hebrews 8 verse 2, so I have the Lord boxed in, the Lord pitched. With this, this is my brand new Bible, and I thought I would just go ahead and mark the verses that are kind of the signature ones for my system, but I haven't gone through in marked up much in this Bible yet. Okay, so next is the color pink. 
And again, I don't know how much this will show up in the video, but we have Hebrews 8 verse 2, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. So the reason this is included is just to remind me that there is a heavenly tabernacle, a true one that's in heaven. But then verse 5, it says, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. It was speaking of in these verses about the earthly system that we have. It's an example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So the pattern, the tabernacle, anything that is representing God and his system is representative, but it's not God. I'm having as pink. So I have heaven and angels and sanctuary and temple and tabernacle and furniture, anything that's part of that system. And I might've left some things out, but anything like that is pink. And then here I have the word glory, and I have that with that squiggly line and the pink. And I decided to make that up here, glory of the Lord, the pink, even though that is God, that's who he is. But I just thought it would show up better in my Bible, so I made it pink. But of course, you can do it differently than I do. But that's the way I have it for that one. So my next color is orange, and this represents Satan. This is Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And there's also a verse 14, which I highlighted similarly, but it's not going to show up on this because I need a different type of tripod to show the top of the Bible. So with this, I wanted the I wills to stand out. So I used this orange twistable to highlight in those I wills. I will ascend, I will sit. Once again, you see that I have the ascend and sit underlined. So Lucifer is circled and then other words that he does are underlined. And then you see here that I've put a heart around heart. And then the word heaven I put in pink. Purple is gonna come up later sides of the north. The other signature verse is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, really verses 3 through 9, but what I put on the front side of my color code was just verses 3 and 4. But this is all about the Antichrist, the son of perdition. And as you can see here, I chose to highlight certain things. Son of perdition, man of sin, as sitteth in the temple, showing himself that he is God, mystery of iniquity, after the workings of Satan, powers and signs, lying wonders. Anytime I want something to stand out or if I'm seeing repetition, then I'm highlighting it. But otherwise I'm not because I don't want to be overwhelmed with color, but I do want to see it. In this case too, this is a verb, let no man deceive you, but I did circle it in that case. So it's not a hard and fast rule. It's whatever feels in that moment as you're interacting with scripture. And I also feel like right here I have for that day, I had that in yellow and you'll find out about that in a minute. But if I had highlighted the whole thing in orange, I would not have seen that that day. That means the time that is coming. So I, I like this better personally. This is just one way that you can do it. So the color orange is anything that sets itself up against God. Pink is very similar to red and that's why I set it up as heavenly things. The, things that represent God. But orange, I have that as Satan and Antichrist because it kind of wants to look like red, but it's not red. It's got some other stuff mixed in. So it's anything that sets itself up wanting to be God. And so for orange, I have Satan, Antichrist, mystery of iniquity, son of perdition, false prophets, unbelievers, the wicked, mystery Babylon, sin, consequences. We have strange fire and fire, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, and then Satan's heart. And then here I have mystery circled, and then the rest of it is the way I chose to do those. So in the temple, there was the fire that God started, and then Aaron's sons used strange fire. So you'll see that story, and I'll put it up on the screen, but they brought in something that was not acceptable. So really anything that's not acceptable by God. And also often when I see the word no or not, any negatives, I put it in orange, and it could be for our good. And so that is the color orange. And the one thing is the good kind of fire. I have that boxed in red, 
And also within that box, I have an, an underline of orange and you might not be able to see that on the screen, but it kind of reminds me of fire. And to me, I also feel like fire comes down from heaven when people are in trouble. So it's heavenly fire. So I feel like there's some consequences of sin that is often tied up with that. In the end, we know the believers are going to be burned up with fire. And so there's that judgment, that consequence. So that's how I've chosen to mark fire in my Bible. I don't have notes in my new Bible yet. So this is my old Bible. And I just wanted to show an example. When I'm writing notes, if it's a note about what God is doing, I write that in red. And then if it's a note about sin, then I'm writing it in orange. It's just whatever that color is about. The one thing is that because my pages are cream colored, the orange kind of blends in and it might not look like that on the video, but I have just noticed any orange notes, my eyes have a harder time focusing on that color. So what I'm gonna start doing in my new Bible is that anytime I need to write a note about sin, I'm gonna use my black pen and then also Yellow is another color that it would just be impossible to take notes with the color yellow. So that one is the color brown that I'll write notes with, but I'll go over that information when we get to that color. But I just wanted to share that part of it. So my next color is green, and the signature verse that I have for that is Ephesians 4, verses 14 and 15. And if you look at this video, on the top of my color code chart, it's only showing verse 15. And then I actually realized I forgot to put in 14 because that's an important part of this verse. I updated and changed it. So if you do ask for that insert, it's gonna have a little bit of both of these verses. So here are these two verses that I feel represent the color green for me. And so it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So in this, you can see a lot of orange. We don't want to be children anymore. We want to grow up into the true doctrine, the fullness of scripture. We know from 2 Thessalonians that there is an antichrist system, and it is actually doing all the things that we see in this, it sends out doctrine with cunning words and seeks to deceive. And we want to be digging into scripture so that we're not deceived, so that we can grow up into him, which is the head. And that's that truth, because it says the truth is the head and that head is Christ. So as we dig into scripture deeper, we're going to see the truth of who God is and we're going to be shaking off all the false doctrines of the Antichrist system and coming into the truth of what does the scripture actually say. I'm no longer going to listen to man's craftiness and I'm not going to be just taking part in something because it's the traditions of man. I'm going to be lining my life up to scripture. So these two sets of verses are so important to me. It's pretty much the whole reason I started this channel. And so what I do is when I get into digging into scripture, I use the color green. And so I'm using this verse because it says grow up. And so I'm thinking of plants and how they grow and they become green. And that's that fullness that we see. So it is a little bit of a stretch to say that's green, but I really like this verse. So I'm excited that it's one of my signature verses for my color code system. So green is for anything related to having a deeper meaning. It's going to help us grow up into him. So these are alternate translations. So I use the KJV and my normal speaking language is not KJV English. I prefer it because I have found sometimes that other translations go very far off the mark. KJV, I don't believe that's perfect either. Some people say that's inspired by God. I don't believe that because if it was, you wouldn't find any time that there was something not quite interpreted as well as some other translation. But I use KJV as my base because I believe most of it is pretty good. And then what I do is I look at other translations and most of them, it's very easy like NKJV, NASV, ESV, NLT, most of them are easy. But the Amplified, it's such a long word, I don't want to write that in my Bible, so I do the AMP. And the Berean, I just write B-E-R. And what I do is I write beside it in green, whatever the interpretation is. And then if there's a Strong's number, there's definitions. And then sometimes I write the verse in other words. So it's not a translation that I found. It's just another way of saying it. So just to show you an example of this, this is my old Bible. And what you can see is that like here, 
I have established, and above it I have the Strong's number, and off to the side I have that Strong's number and then the definition. So the other thing that I do for me is that I have the KJV, and then I compare it to the NKJV first, and I write those words on the top if they're different. And then I go to other translations if I need to, if I don't feel very clear on what I've heard. So again, this is my old Bible, but I would just go through and put NKJV, and then over here, I had done that with the NKJV, but then here I have the CSV and the Holman and the NLT. They showed the length as actually being eight and a third miles long and six and two thirds miles wide. And then Ezekiel 45 verse two, and three, I actually wrote the whole verse out in the green off to the side. So that's something that I help myself with. So green is just digging in and getting deeper meanings. So I'll say this, I have a soft spot for this color because this is what started me on my journey of color coding using verses. And it's because this verse was shown to me and Numbers 15 verse 38, we have speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So continuing with that, we have verse 39, and it, those ribbons of blue, the fringe of the borders, shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So this it here is the ribbons of blue. And then these commandments, are in blue. So when we look at the color blue, we can think of God's commandments and we don't have to wear them as fringes because remember God says he's going to write these laws on our hearts because these laws really show us the character of God, his government of love. And so we want those written on our hearts. And so I do have some brown in here. I'll be showing you that and you might be able to guess just based on what you're seeing. But here I have Egypt and I have that boxed in orange because that was something that they were brought out of. So here we have, ye seek not, and so I've circled that in orange, after your own heart, and that I have in orange because our heart was not good, and our own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. And remember, the whore of Babylon, that antichrist system that doesn't want to keep the commandments of God, that thinks to change times and laws. So we don't want to be doing that. So I have that in orange. And just before I move on to the next verse, I just want to say this is the reason why I like this system. And so for some people, this might be just too much, but I just like it. It digs in. I could have made the whole thing blue like a lot of people do, and that is fine. I just like digging in and seeing these terms and seeing, oh, there's a reference to whoring the Whore of Babylon. So this just helps it cement in my mind. And I find that the more work I do on a verse, helps me to remember where it is on the page and what side of the page, those kind of things. So I just find that it helps me for whatever reason. And I think that we're all different kind of learners. Some of us are auditory. I'm a very hands-on physical kind of learner. There's no one correct answer to this. It's just whatever you find that works for you. So my other signature verse, and there's a lot of verses like this, is Hebrews 10:16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. So here I have laws and the word them in blue because those are referring to the law. And there's a lot of verses that talk about him putting his laws into our hearts. So we're not going to need those fringes on our garments. They're going to be written in our hearts. The only way for them to be written into our heart is for God to do that. He says, I will put my laws into their hearts. But we are so blessed because our God doesn't trample over our desires and we have to ask him to help us. We have to tell him, I see the importance of this and I want them in my heart. I want to come after you. I want to completely connect with you. So you're going to see also that like the word covenant here, I have it underlined and then boxed in red because it's God's covenant with us. And that I is God. And then here's the verb saith the Lord. So I have that underlined. Okay. So in blue, I have law, commandments, statutes, testimonies, 
promise, truth, rest, and Sabbath in blue, boxed in in blue. A lot of times God refers to the Sabbath as his covenant with us or the sign that we're his people. So I have that boxed in in blue. And then I have covenant boxed in in red and then underlined with blue. And another word that I'm going to add to this to show you in the other columns is I have judgment. I have that underlined with blue and orange and then I box it in red. And I I have that in the red section and the orange section because judgment is something it's based on people going astray of his law. Sin is transgression of the law, the Bible says. So we have that law and then the consequences, the judgment is orange and then God is doing it. So I have that boxed in red and you don't have to do all those colors. You could just box it in orange or just box it in blue, whatever works for you. And then we'll get into these other ones in a minute. So for the color purple, I have Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So here we have saints and they have two things. They have the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So the commandments of God is blue. The faith of Jesus is red. So blue plus red equals purple. So I loved how that worked out. I had already decided blue and red. Blue was actually the first color that I found. And then red, I just thought God is love, God is fire. So this is one of my favorite things that happened out of this. So one of the things you'll notice in here, I have commandments of God circled in blue and I have God in red and faith of Jesus. And here's saints, here are they that keep. Now that is a verb, but I wanted to really emphasize the fact that the saints are doing that. So I circled it. And then the word patience here, this is a fruit of the Spirit, and so I have that circled in purple and then underlined in red. So here are the words that I have on my color code card. I have believers, church, bride of Christ. So bride is circled in purple and then of Christ. Then I have holy convocation, any fruits of the Spirit. And I do feel like listing those out here, and I might add that, but I have that underlined in red and then squared in in purple. Here I have love. So that one is a fruit of the Spirit but I have that one as a heart and then our hearts. So we have Satan's heart, that's an orange heart or the wicked's heart. And then we have God's heart in red and then we have our heart in purple. Atonement and salvation. Oh, and see, I put that in two spots. So I'll just need to delete this one off of this card. So all of these I have boxed in purple and then underlined in red. And of course you can do it the other way around. To stand, this is something that is also in my symbols card that I'll be showing in the next video. But I have that one underlined in red and boxed in purple. And you're gonna see that throughout scripture where believers are gonna be the ones that stand in the end times. So I want that to stand out. So I have that with red and purple. Now, as I mentioned, Brown does not have a Bible verse. So anytime I see a place, a location, or a timing, or historical information, I'm going to be circling or underlining that in the passage. And then also, if that information is not given, but I want to supply the information like the year that this would have happened based on the historical records that we have, I would write that in in my Bible in the brown coloring. So that brings me to my next set, and that's Word of God and My Word. And the way I've chosen to do that is to underline it in blue blue and then God is boxed in and my is boxed in and then it's underlined the whole phrase is underlined in red and then the entirety of it is boxed so I'd also shown that up here but just anytime I come across that that's the way I want it to look just to make it stand out and then also what I have in my Bible are New Testament and Old Testament connections something where they reference each other and so I'm going to write that reference in brown beside it I don't underline the whole thing in brown maybe I could put brackets but I tend to write the Bible reference beside it in brown so those are any scripture references show you an example of this this is again my old Bible and I have just information information about Asherus written in brown on top. This says in the third year of his reign. So I've written beside it the date of 483 BC. And then here I have another date. And again, you can see where I have the green just helping me out understanding what I'm reading. Nehemiah in chapter 13 verse 28, we read about Sanballat the Horonite. And just so I didn't miss the fact that this was someone that we'd seen over and over again in scripture, I wrote what the references were 
for that person and how he was a troublemaker. So we can know the time of Jesus's birth based on the prophecy of Daniel 9. And then we can see how scripture lines up with that in Luke chapter 2. It gives us the ruler. And so I have on here his reign. And then to go to Luke chapter 3 verses 1 through 2. So here I have now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. And so I have the dating over here. And also notice this John preaches repentance. This was something that was also mentioned in Matthew 3 verses 1 through 12. So I wrote it here and I'm still thinking about in my new Bible how I'm going to notate this. But I want all the Gospels, wherever something is mentioned in another Gospel, I want to have it referenced. And so that's more information on the dating because we know when he was anointed based on Acts chapter 10 verses 36 through 38. And so that's referenced in Daniel 9, 25. So in AD 27, Jesus was anointed at his baptism. So this again is my old Bible and I was just scribbling it in. I knew at this point I had a new Bible, so I was just getting the notes down. It, this really became a notebook. And as you can see, I wrote in the brown beside it, this information, these are where this appears in the other gospels, same as down here. And then for it is written, this is something in the Old Testament that was mentioned. So I have it written in the brown and then underlined in red and then boxed in yellow. So probably in my new Bible, I might write it right beside here. I am not really sure. Things that I'm trying to decide, I didn't want to rush it in my new Bible. So that's why I'm showing you stuff from my old Bible, just so you can get an idea of something that you could do if you're interested. So one more thing that I do with the color brown, and that is to mark all of the extra little words that lend meaning. And I could have done this in green, but I wanted it to stand out because green ends up being in so many places within the verse. So I wanted something different. So I did brown. An example of this is in Romans chapter 12, verses 18 through 20. And I haven't marked the whole verse or anything like that. I just wanted to show a few key things. So in verse 18, there's the word if, if it be possible. And then verse 19, for, and then verse 20, therefore, if. The other thing is in my color code, I wrote word of God and my word. But another thing that's said quite often is the phrase, it is written. And I want that to stand out. It stands for the word of God. So I have on here a line of blue, a line of red, and then it's boxed in brown because it represents the word of God, what is written. So my verse for the color yellow is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So I liked this prophecy is a light. So there is our yellow sure word. Notice I have this a more sure word of prophecy. I've boxed in prophecy and then I've underlined this whole phrase, but then that sure word that has to do with truth. So I've underlined that in blue as well. And of course you don't have to do it this way. Just as you're thinking through it, like here I have boxed in we, and then really we have. So it's really as you're interacting with scripture. So then ye take heed. So we want to take heed as and in. So there's a lot of those linking words. So these kind of words I put in brown, light that shine. And then here's dark place. That's an orange and your heart. So I've circled your and I've put a heart around hearts. Now we have the day dawn and the day star arise. And I believe that would be Christ. He's the day star that's going to arise in our hearts. So I liked that this word of prophecy is a light that shineth in a dark place. And remember, there's the dark ages where the Antichrist system was in power and they were outlawing the Bible. So there was this light always during that time of knowing that Christ would be coming, that there would be an end to the system. And so Christ is our light. So here, anything to do with prophecies I have in yellow. And what I do, that is about timing. So when I need to write a note that has to do with yellow, I also write it in brown because I wouldn't be able to read the writing of yellow. So with this also, I never underline the whole verse in this system saying, oh, this is a prophecy of Jesus. I'm going to underline the whole thing. I personally don't do that. So say I'm in the Old Testament. I would write next to that verse in brown the Bible reference to the New Testament where it's fulfilled. And there could be, of course, three or four Gospels that show that fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus. 
So I'd write it in brown and then I'd underline it in red and then I'd box that in yellow. Now, if it's just a New Testament, Old Testament prophecy, but it doesn't have to do with Christ, then I'm only writing it in brown and then I'm circling it in yellow. Then also we have mentioned the times of the early rain and the times of the latter rain. And so what I do with that is I underline it in purple because that has to do with believers. And then I underline it in pink and then I box it in in yellow. And then also when I see the words day of judgment, time of Jacob's trouble, and the great day of God Almighty, and there could be slight variations to that, I underline that in orange, red, and then box it in in yellow so it really stands out. And I'll show you some of those examples. So here's an overview of my system. So I've flipped my color code out. And as I come to this term, Day of the Lord, I've highlighted it based on this. It might be hard to see this because I've zoomed so far out, but there's an orange line and a red line and then it's boxed in yellow. And of course, there's actually more highlighting that would happen in here, but I did this quickly just so you could see it. And then you can see Day of the Lord here as well. So anytime I saw that, I highlighted it. And as I mentioned, it's not here, but it's just one of these Great Day of God Almighty, all of these. I didn't list all of them. There are different versions of it. And on the very next side of the page, again, you can see Great and Terrible Day of the Lord, Day of the Lord. And then here in Joel chapter 3, verse 18, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk. So this is after all of this great day of God's wrath. So here we see in Joel chapter 3 verse 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So people are going to come to this time of decision. So that is where those colors are. But here it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with water. So this is after that. So I just chose to box that in in yellow. I felt this was just more talking about a future date. So that's how I did that. So this is Joel chapter 2 verse 23. And it says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And so what we have here is, ye children of Zion, rejoice. So I've circled that in purple. Rejoice. That's something they're doing. In, that's in brown. I've circled that. The Lord in red. Your God. So I have that circle in purple and the word God circled in red. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. So that's where I have that purple and pink and then boxed in yellow. And the rain the same way in the former rain. So he's going to cause to come down for us the former rain and the latter rain. And so we know that the former rain is the outpouring at Pentecost on the disciples. And we're told in the end times that we're going to be given those former rains and then latter rains as well. So my thought in making this is attaching it with washi tape. And that's so you can make changes and then later type things in. This is on a Word document. So when I feel like I have a lot of them, a lot of changes, I can just reprint it out. So I just want to mention I stuck that in there. And so on the one that I send out, it's going to say it is written on there, only it ends up over here. And then because this was in two different spots, I actually just combined that into New Testament and Old Testament references. And then just as an editing thing, I mentioned the fruits of the Spirit. And what I'd forgotten was when I have the word love, I put the heart over it, but then I do underline it in the red so that it's one of those fruit of the Spirit. So that's just as an editing note. So now what I thought I'd do, I'd go ahead and show you a section of my Bible where I've highlighted a bunch just to show it to you. And so when you see that, you might see it as just too overwhelming with too much going on. And I can't say that I blame you. So then you can see what I've done and decide if it's something that will work for you or not. Maybe you'll see it and right away think, I do not like the look of that. It's not going to work for me. So I'll go ahead and show that to you now. I wish I could get up to the top of my Bible a little bit better with zooming. And it's just because I have an inexpensive tripod and I need one that comes up over. And so hopefully at some point I can get one and I can film these a little bit better. So what I did is in this, I wanted if and then to stand out. So we have if my people, so 
my people, I boxed that in red and then I underlined the people. And the if I wanted to stand out in the then. So I highlighted those two spots. So if my people, which are called by my name, and so because God is the one that's going to call us, he's going to be the one that seals us. I have that underline, that verb, called by my name, and my name is boxed in, and the word by, I have that in brown. I have that circled in brown, in case you can't see the colors on there. And then humble themselves, so that I have the underline in purple, because that's what his people are doing. And so I circled that in brown, and so every and I circled in brown to show it. So here's, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, so that's boxed in in pink, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So one thing that I chose to do in this, and you might not be able to see it, is their wicked ways, their sins. So they're turning from it. So they are in purple, but while they had wicked ways, they were sinful. So I circled it in orange and purple. And so it's just a choice that I've made for that. But as I said, there's just no hard and fast rules. So here we have, for now have I chosen and sanctified this house. So I squared that in in pink. Here we have another if and then. So I circled and highlighted it in brown. And then I'll show you a section in here. I'll zoom in closer so that you can see it. So I've zoomed in on this. And one of the reasons I want to show this is because once you start squaring things in, or once you start adding in a lot of the underlines, you're running out of room in between. So I like the fact that this is in the large print. So there is more room so I can make all these marks. But once I've done this, it's going to be pretty impossible to write in green and make it legible for myself. So one thing I want to recommend is if you decide you like the system and you want to do something like this is you read it first and mark the green first and then come back and do all the colors because then you can write in green and then you can circle around it and another thing that can be done and something that I might do for myself is all the green might go here and then other notes will kind of go around the green and it might be that if I have some in-depth note that I'm going to be creating some inserts to go into my Bible so those are just pages that I glue into the binding and then on that insert will be notes that have to do with the section that I'm reading. So it's just wanting to share a little side note about what I'm thinking through on the green and how to handle that. One other thing I want to mention is that if you looked at my old Bible, you would see that it doesn't look like this. When I'm digging into scripture, I don't actually highlight every little thing. It would more just be circling in those things that I really want to have stand out. Whatever is calling me in the moment, it's just that I'm color coding it by my system and doing it by words. So it might be just on this whole page, there might have been one verse that I marked. I've never felt like I needed to take my Bible and mark every single word. I just wanted to do this for this section just to give you an idea of what it could look like. And the reason I want to say that is because I don't want anybody to come away from this video thinking she is saying that I need to go through my Bible and mark every single word. Don't let anybody put that kind of burden on you. This is just a tool that I use to help me as I search and as I seek to understand the scripture. So if you don't need that in that verse, don't bother doing it. This I just decided to mark up just to give you an example of how I'm thinking through words. It is not a burden to be placed on anybody. Just remember that it's always just what's going to help you dig into scripture and get closer to God. You just kind of have to weigh out what is going to help me in this moment. So now I'm going to transition back to showing you these verses and why I highlighted in certain colors just to give you more of an idea of this. So here I show, but if then, because usually it's showing that choice that we have. This house, I did do that in pink. I was thinking of the sanctuary that Solomon had just finished building at this section. This is Second Chronicles chapter 8. So here is where this digging in has helped me and then also gotten me into trouble. So I'll show you where I got into a little bit of trouble here and how I think this actually helped me out. But I'll show you what I did and then you can decide. So in verses 19 through 21, he's saying, but if you turn away and you start worshiping these other gods, these consequences are going to come upon you. And so I got down to verse 22 and it says, and it shall be answered because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Now, when I read through that, I was so confused because I saw of their fathers, which brought them out. And I thought the fathers brought them out and that just did not line up with scripture because 
God is the one that brought them out. And they did a lot of complaining. And then I realized that which actually went back to the word God. So God, which brought them forth of the fathers actually relates to who God took out of the land. So I'm not sure why I got so confused with that, but I am hoping with my highlights. So because that was a tripping point for me, I actually went back with a red crayon and highlighted the God and which brought and I even made a line which I know a lot of people love making lines. I try not to unless it's really important to me. And so I kind of have this line going across and it's a little bit messy. But God, which brought them forth. So because and therefore I then highlighted in brown. So that's kind of a look at how I've highlighted this and how sometimes it just helps me to dig in. And it is a reason why I personally choose not to highlight a lot because I want the highlighted parts to stand out. Uh, the last thing I want to say about brown is that when there's a person mentioned or a place mentioned, that's when I'll do the brown. One last thing I want to mention about people is that I've decided in my Bible, any person who's mentioned in the line of Jesus, I want to highlight them a different way. And that is to be underlined in red and then squared in yellow. So then when I see that mark, I know this is someone who was used in the line of Jesus. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that every time or just that on every page, if that person is mentioned, there's at least one time where I show, oh, this person is in the line of Jesus. And then of course, if they're having negative behaviors, it would be in orange or if, it, or if it's good behaviors, it would be in purple. But I'm not sure if every single time I see that name, if I'm going to highlight it this way, I'm leaning towards this so that every time that name shows up, it's always notated that way. But then their behaviors, whatever they're doing, would be in orange or purple. So that's a look at this system. I just love the way that folds out there. And I do want to share, I have another part to the system. And this is where I'm tracking the symbols of prophecy. So I'll include that in the next video of all the symbols that I found so far and how I'm marking that. So that will be in the next video. So anyways, that is my color code. And again, of course, all of it's free. Just send me an email if you're interested in this sheet, if you're interested in doing a similar thing. Mm -hmm.